This is Janae Harding and you're listening to MMA Ground and Pound. Hey everybody, this is John Carlo Alino reporting for Fired Up Network with another edition of the MMA Ground and Pound show. And uh, as you see my guest, uh, she's going to be competing at Bellator 259. She's Janae Harding. How you doing, Janae? Good, thank you. How are you? Uh, doing great. And, uh, you know, this fight coming up at Bellator 259, uh, you're going to be taking on Liam McCourt. And uh, this fight last year was originally scheduled, got canceled because of the pandemic. Uh, so how excited are you that you're going to be taking on uh, Leia at this event? Yeah, super excited for just have it finally happen. Um, we've had a few ups and downs, a few different days. This is probably, I think, maybe our third different date that we've had. So, yeah, just finally excited for it to come to pass and, and finally get in there and, and, and get it done. Yeah, and Leia, it's been over a year since she last fought. So uh, what are you expecting out of her in this fight? I mean, definitely expecting just a hungry, hungrier version of her, I'm sure. She had a setback of a shoulder surgery, so um, it's good to know that she's kind of, um, I guess she would, she would just be super motivated, um, that's for sure. Um, she'll be, you know, having had that adversity to face, she'll, she'll be in there ready to to really make a statement and, and come back strong. So, so that, for me, knows that I'm hopefully getting the best version of her and and therefore, hopefully getting a win over the best version of Leah. So it'll be exciting. Yeah. Also, like you were fighting, you've got a chance to feel what it was like to fight a Mohegan Sun with no fans and this whole new norm. What did you take away from that experience? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that I'm super comfortable going back. I kind of know what to expect. I know um, sort of the whole protocol, the whole procedure. This would be my third time fighting at the Mohegan. Obviously, one with a crowd, now one without, and um, this next one again without. But all the protocols and stuff, it just sort of like is understanding what to expect. I think the first time, like last year, end of last year, I was sort of just like, oh, I don't really know what's going to happen. How much of the time are we going to spend in our hotel rooms? Like, how much space do we have and all these like little things. Whereas now I know exactly what to expect, how to get my food, how to do the right things and even like work on mistakes or just things that I could have done better last time. I think that's really, really exciting. And how much does that throw you off going into a fight like that? Does it change your whole preparation or is it just one of those things where you get in there and you just deal with it? Honestly, it's like that with everything in every fight, like no matter what it is, whether it was COVID or anything else, you just kind of like roll with whatever happens. Cause, um, at the end of the day, like whatever it is has to be the perfect scenario. Cause you have to win on your worst day. So therefore I think just like never getting too attached that anything has to be a specific way or, um, anything has to happen perfectly for you to win. It's therefore, it's just like whatever happens, happens. And, and this is definitely one of those times that's shown that. And I think a lot of people have kind of taken aback to loosen their grip on, on things that going as smoothly as they need to be. So therefore now it's just like, yeah, it is what it is. Like fighting is fighting at the end of the day. I've done all the hard work before I leave. So um, the best I can do is just go through the motions and, and do the best I can with what we're provided with. And we're honestly, Bellator treats us so well and, and organizes it really like super efficiently. So therefore it's just all smooth sailing from here. Yeah. With uh, Janae Harding here on the MMA ground and pound show on fired up network and Janae, like your background coming into MMA karate background, uh, in your last fight, we got to see some of your striking on full display there against Jesse Mealy. Do you feel like you're at a point in your career where everything's just starting to click and transition into MMA? Yeah, 100%. It's sort of just like um, something that I've said in the past is just that everything's starting to click. I, I have a solid base. I have a solid team. I'm not moving around anymore. I'm not traveling everywhere. Um, I'm not living out of a bag. I, I'm really like solid in, in everything that I'm doing. My schedule has been super solid for the last like year or so. And all these things have made leaps and bounds in, in my progression through MMA, my skill set and, and working towards the things that I wanted to. And so therefore solidifying all of the, the skill set that I already had. So the strengths that I already had, like striking is just sort of like, I guess, adapted a little bit even better to, to my MMA game and, and, at the same time, I'm bringing up all my grappling and wrestling. And so, therefore, I'm becoming like more of a well-rounded fighter. And I think that really showed in that last fight. And um, so, I'm excited to see how, how much more improvement I can do in this next performance. 
And yeah, just curious about that. Like you have a karate background. So when you're going into MMA, what are some of the differences uh, that style brings in towards MMA? Because it's not common. We see too many karate fighters go into MMA. So like, what are some of the big differences you notice? I think I transitioned at a really good time where I didn't get too solid in some of the negatives that come from karate, like the lower guard, the like the slower sort of um, like ippon fighting and stuff like that. And, and I guess, yeah, just that sideways sort of style. But at the same time, I kind of came in at a, I transitioned at a good time that allowed me to really adapt it towards MMA um, to use, I guess, the unorthodox sort of kicks that, may look like a leg kick, but they can go high because they all sort of look very similar in their setups in a sense. Um, use that distance control. Some, like Someone like Leona Machida doesn't really well, like really uses that back foot movement, um, kind of stuff like that. I think I was just able to take all the positives out of it, leave the rest behind and really move on towards MMA and, and kind of um, mainly those, those kicking adaptions I think have – in each performance sort of um, paid me dividends even this many years after I've really let karate go. But um, it gives you a really good solid style and it definitely gave me a great introduction to striking and maybe used to striking from an early age and gave me a love for it. So I've sort of just built on that love and constantly trying to evolve and adapt it in, in my own personal way. And when you were just going into MMA, like who are some of the coaches or training partners that really worked with you to try to make you the most well-rounded fighter that you are? Yeah. I mean, at the very beginning, Vincent Perry was a big one. He was um, probably like a solid six years of my, my career that I spent under him. So he really developed me from those early years and, and moving not only from karate, but just as a kid, like as a really young kid, 15 year old, like not really knowing what I was doing and, and giving me the foundations that I needed. Um, right now um, I'm with Renato Sabotish and that's been fantastic to, I kind of feel like we're at a point that, um, it works perfectly because we can really bounce ideas off each other and constantly um, play around with things. Like he'll see something from the UFC card or a Bellator card or something, then send it to me or, or send it to all of us in our group chat. And then we'll be like, yeah, cool. We'll work on that. And we'll do this from here or, or maybe he'll teach a technique, but then we'll be like, Oh, maybe this would be a little bit better for my style. Or this would be a little bit more towards what I would want to do. And, and I love that. And I love that we're kind of at the similar age for that opportunity to be able to do that. Whereas I think sometimes um, as much as I love my old coaches that I've, I've been with, um, sometimes you kind of end up outgrowing them and, and not really creating as much anymore. You kind of get a little bit stagnant. So therefore adding a new, uh, I guess, younger um, visual on it, it really changed it up and really allowed us to really play with a few more things. And I think it's just like an added step in my game. Um, I've learned something from everyone that I've trained with. And I've trained all over the world, but um, now is a great time for us to really be solid and just have that consistency where we do pads every week and we're like, okay, what about this? Okay. What about this? And, and these things that really fills my cup. It keeps my love for the sport for one and two, obviously it continues me to build my game and make it better. And during this time now, like when you're with this team and everybody's showing you different things, what's the best piece of advice you got in, uh, out of working with them? Well, that's a hard one. I guess it's just like one of the best pieces of advice I think I've ever got in my career is um, to always ask questions and to treat um, like MMA, even the fight itself as – um, just, yeah, you're asking questions, you're getting answers for it. And then you're making your own solutions off these answers. Like, I think, I think that's hundred percent, that's creativity, that's expression. And that's, um, I guess our primal instinct, but at the same time, it just gives you, um, so much more confidence to adapt to each situation because MMA is so variable. Like each person is so variable as much as my next opponent is a judo jiu-jitsu background, you know, her striking is going to be variable. So I have to ask questions in that retrospect with my like body language and my abilities. And I think that's probably like one of the best um, advices that I've ever gotten um, to see it that way. And so therefore it changed my perspective on it and therefore made me a little bit more confident going into everything. I just, I just like changed it up and I was like, you know what, like every single fight's going to be different. Every single spa is going to be different. And therefore you have to adapt it accordingly. 
That's great advice there. Uh, with Janae Harding here on the MMA Ground and Pound Show, Fired Up Network. And Janae, we recently got the updated rankings there in Bellator. You're ranked there in that division at sixth. So after this fight, uh, hope that everything goes your way here. Who are you going to be calling out after this? And who do you have your eye on in the division? Not really going to um, – no, I've never really been much as I want to call people out, but – Definitely anyone in the top five, I think, um, solidifying my spot at six, whether this win moves me from six or keeps me at six, I'm happy for with either because I guess this matchup was done well before we had sort of any rankings or anything. Um, but it definitely puts me in the place of someone in that top five. Um, some A rematch with Sinead, a, a matchup with Kat Zingano would be amazing. These are all things that I definitely have my eye on. Um, Leslie Smith, w- whether she wins or loses, um, that'll be interesting. So therefore, it's just like all of those matchups are super exciting. I think um, a win in general just solidify my spot, put my name in the mix a little bit more. Um, like you said, I'm on six, so that's a great place to be for me. I'm very, um, very happy to be there. I'm the youngest in the top ten. I'm, I'm looking forward to you know just just evolving from that. And then I guess a win, another win, and a win streak. We'll continue to do that, and we can keep building. Yeah. And like their division right now in Bellator, like that 145 pound division, I noticed that the promotion has really invested in that. Do you think that it will come a time where we see a Grand Prix in that? Would you be open to competing in a Grand Prix? Oh, 100%. It's definitely been something since the heavyweight Grand Prix um, that I was hoping would hopefully eventuate. And I think just as it grows and as we get more names added to to the whole mix. And now we've got a top 10. Um, we've got 10 solo girls that yeah, would hundred percent make for a really cool grand prix. Um, I, th- I would love for that to happen. I think, um, I think it's something that a lot of the other girls in the division would love for- to happen as well. I've definitely spoken to them and it would be something that's super exciting. And it would just add a little bit more eyes on our division. Our division is already super solid and I think like well-structured and got a lot of solid names. So therefore it just adds another aspect to it. Having a grand prix would, um, would, really show um i guess a little bit more structure as well we can all fight each other and we can all see who comes up on top it's it's really cool to see yeah i agree we gotta send this to scott coker after maybe i'll make that decision but uh before we wrap up here uh how can we follow you on social media yeah across the board um all my socials are pretty much janae harding um so you guys can follow me on instagram twitter facebook um all of it and um i think that's it and yeah and you can find me all my fights on YouTube and everything like that, but appreciate it. Yeah. That's Janae Harding and uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks a lot for taking the time and uh, yeah, best of mm-hmm. luck in your fight at Bellator 259. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.